Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in, Andy here. This video is going to be a little bit different than my recent videos because I'm not really going to be taking a look at a specific product or products. This is just going to be more of a process, a solution to a problem, which is something that I do quite a bit in my day job. So in one of my recent videos, someone asked me just how you would go about doing a fresh installation of Windows 10 on a computer after upgrading the SSD. And so this would also apply if you're moving from a hard drive to an SSD, if one has failed, you know, or if you have a new computer that has a lot of junk installed on it from the factory and you just want to give it a clean installation of Windows. Um, which is something that's not a bad idea because we all remember the issue Lenovo had a couple years ago with Superfish, you know, the malware that was pre-installed on the computer. Um, so I, I always like to give a new computer a clean installation of Windows. And so we're just going to go through exactly how you do that. So there are only two things that you really need for this process. You're going to need a Windows computer. Uh, or This will always make it easier. A Windows computer running Windows 7 or Windows 10. And then a flash drive of at least 8 gigabytes in size. And so as long as you have those things, the next step will be to open Chrome. And we'll just do a search for the Windows 10. Oh, if we can spell it. Windows 10 Media Creation Tool. Fortunately, it's pretty commonly searched for, at least by me. And there we go. Uh, for me, it's the first result. Uh, I have an ad blocker, so you might have to go past a few ads at the top to get there. But it should say download Windows 10 Disk Image ISO File Microsoft and we'll click on that one. This will take us to a page where it'll look like it wants us to install an update that has nothing to do with what we're trying to do. So you can just skip the update and go down to the Create Windows 10 Installation Media section and click on Download Tool Now. And in Chrome, this will be in the bottom left. In Firefox or Opera, your download will be in the top right. And once it finishes downloading, you can click right on that file and it will ask your permission. We will say yes. All right, and it is launched and it's gonna say getting a few things ready. And this can take a little bit of time. All in all, it usually takes, I'm guesstimating 10 to 15 minutes, but I'll be speeding this up. Not just this part. This doesn't take 10 to 15 minutes on its own. The whole process of making the, the flash drive. Though the speed of the drive and the speed of the computer will make a difference. And your internet connection. Alright, so that wasn't too bad. We will say accept. I've already read it, so... Okay, so we've made it to the first real critical question, maybe the only one, um, which is, what do you want to do? Do you want to upgrade this computer, or do you want to create installation, installation media for another computer? Which, uh, that's what this video is all about, so that's what we're going to choose, and then say next. In this page where we have the settings for the version of Windows that you want to use, it's probably a good idea to just go with the defaults if you uh, aren't sure about what you need to do. But in all likelihood, the only setting that's likely to matter is the architecture. In all likelihood, you probably want 64-bit. I guess you can always go both, but you probably want 64-bit. Uh, the only reason you'd want 32-bit is if your computer has less than 4 gigs of RAM. Um, so if it does, if, if, you, if you've only got 2 gigs of RAM, then yeah, sure, you can go with 32-bit. I guess there might be a few other reasons, but you would know if you needed it. So if you're not sure, I would recommend 64-bit. And we'll say next. And then which type of media? So you can download an ISO file. There are some different things you can do with that, um, including make a flash drive in a different way if you're having trouble with the media creation tool. So, but yeah, we're going to just make the flash drive right through the media creation tool and say next. And so we have mini slow turned, uh, or already plugged in. That's one of my flash drives. This is a USB 2.0 flash drive, so it'll take a little bit of time to make the drive, but we'll speed it up. And if you didn't have your flash drive already plugged in when you got to this point, uh, it's not too late. You can just go ahead and plug it in and click on refresh drive list 
and it should show up. And then we'll say next. And so it's gonna go through the downloading process. If you've got slow internet, unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do because this is about a four gigabyte download now. So it's gonna take a little while if you've got slow internet. Uh, and even on reasonably fast internet, it's not gonna be immediate. So I'm, I'll talk a little bit actually about how I'm gonna be installing this on the SSD. So what I'm actually doing is uh, I have a an older laptop that I keep around just for tooling around with. And so I'm gonna go ahead and nuke its SSD for the purposes of this video. Uh, just to show how I like to handle doing a fresh installation of Windows. And so what I do is I actually just totally delete all of the partitions from the drive and let the Windows installer just totally handle creating brand new partitions from unformatted space. And the reason I do that is I feel like that gives it just like the cleanest start where there's there's no excuse for anything to be wrong if you're letting the Windows installer just automatically take care of the whole process. So that's what I'll be showing you in the next part of the video. So we'll let the download finish and finish up this setup and move on to installing Windows 10. All right, so we have our USB flash drive ready to go, and we will just insert that into the USB port. All right, and then we're gonna boot up. And so before I boot up, uh, I'll let you know what's gonna happen because it happens pretty quick, is that there's gonna be a key. It's usually gonna be an F key. So one of your function keys, you know, you have F1, F2. There's a lot of times you use for volume control and other things you're gonna have to use a key to get into the boot menu so that you can tell your compu the computer to use that USB drive to boot. Um, if it's a brand new SSD, you actually may not have to do that. You might be able to just stick it in and since there will be nothing on the SSD, the computer will say, hey, let me just try to boot from anything. And it'll go to that. Uh, but even still, some computers just won't boot to USB automatically, so you'll have to get to the boot menu. It, on the ThinkPad I'm using, there's actually a Think Vantage button that's dedicated for this type of stuff, so I won't be having to use a function key to get in. I'll be using that. Um, but let's go ahead and boot up, and we'll start this process of installing Windows. And I'll hit my blue Think Vantage button. All right, and now I will have to go F12 to choose a temporary startup device. All right, so I moved the laptop a little bit around there so you can hopefully see the screen a little bit better. So after hitting F12, I got to this boot menu where I'm gonna go down and pick, it's labeled as a USB hard drive, but it's my SanDisk Cruiser. So I will pick that and say enter. And we should get, there it is, the Windows logo, the Windows 10 logo. So I had Windows 7 installed on this before, and so it's gonna offer me to upgrade once we get into the installation process. But we're gonna be doing a totally fresh installation like I talked about. And so you wouldn't even get that upgrade option if it was a totally blank SSD. All right, well, you can see this a little bit. It still doesn't look great. Unfortunately, these ThinkPads, um, beyond a certain age, and even the new ones don't have great screens for the most part, but beyond a certain age, they, they just have really bad screens. They're just all TN panels where you have bad viewing angles. So we'll just, I'll just leave the language settings alone. English is fine. Uh, and then we'll say install now. All right, and so if your computer came with Windows 10, or if you've had Windows 10 installed on it before, there's no need to enter in the product key. And I have uh, activated Windows 10 on this before, so you can just say, I don't have a product key and move on. 
I had Windows 10 Pro on this. Um, you'll know if you need the in version. Otherwise, just pick Home or Pro. Make sure to pick the one that your computer was activated with. So if you got your computer just like at the store, it probably came with Home. Uh, so just pick the right one. Uh, worst case scenario, if you if you had Pro and you accidentally picked Home, you can always go to that. But if you pick Pro and it turns out you only had Home, then I think you have to do another reinstall. But this one did have Pro, I know, so I will say Next. All right, we'll accept the terms and conditions, because like I said, I've already read all of these terms and conditions, so there's no need to pause for that. This is where, if Windows is already installed, you'll get this choice to either upgrade or do a custom install. And so this applies also if you're just doing an install, a reinstall on a new computer because you want a totally clean installation, you want no crapware. For that, you're gonna want, want to go with a custom install. And so here, on most, if it's a new computer, you're gonna have a lot more partitions. I had a pretty lean setup for this Windows 7 installation. Just the primary partition, and then this one little bitty system reserve partition. So what I like to do, like I mentioned, is just go ahead and delete both of those. I don't even uh, bother with formatting them. I just totally delete them. I figured Windows is gonna have to format them in the process of like deleting them and then recreating them. Uh, maybe I'm making too many assumptions with that, uh, but it seems like it's probably not going to be doing a lot more by doing the quick formats. And so I'm going to delete that one as well. And like I said, if you've got a whole bunch in here, and if you're trying to make sure that like the crapware doesn't come back, uh, I, I highly advise you to just get rid of those partitions, because if you leave a bunch of those manufacturer partitions, sure, you know, they might offer some sort of utility, though I don't know why, because, like, BIOS doesn't live there, and, and you don't need, like, outdated drivers just stored in perpetuity on your SSD taking up space. So just get rid of everything, and once you're down to drive zero unallocated space, which should be the, the whole space of your SSD, you can say next. You don't even have to say new. At that point, you can just say next. Um, obviously, if you do want to have like a little storage partition, you could do that in here. You could go ahead and create that. But I don't need that, so I'm just going to say next. And this part is going to go really quick. I'll just zip through it. And, and that's basically it, because it, this is going to take you right into the Windows setup. And I'll let it get to that point. I'll fast forward to that. But that's it. You have uh, you have successfully done a clean installation of Windows on either your new SSD, or you've taken out you know a problematic version of Windows, or just like an old system. You want to give it a refresh with a new installation. Never a, never a terrible idea. Uh, yeah, or if you're taking out a manufacturer install that has has a bunch of bloatware and you want to slim things down. So that's how it goes. We'll let this finish, and I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions about the process, you can definitely leave a comment, and I'll try to get you an answer. Thanks for watching.